Hello, my name is Celia Castellan-Bogan. I am an archivist in the Friends Historical Library and a Swarthmore alum. Thank you for joining us on this virtual tour through Swarthmore College and its history. If you're a Swarthmore alum, I know you love tests, so we're going to start with a quiz. What year was Swarthmore founded? And what year did the Civil War end? Think for a moment, no Googling. Swarthmore was incorporated in 1864, and its doors opened for students in 1869. Meanwhile, the Civil War ended in 1865. So, as you can deduce, Swarthmore College was not directly involved in the Underground Railroad. Slavery was ending at the time the college was formed. However, many of Swarthmore's founders and early administrators were involved in the Underground Railroad, abolitionism, and African American education in the 19th century. We'll look into those stories on our tour today. Moreover, legacies of racial injustice have played out across Swarthmore's campus in different ways throughout the college's history. We'll touch on that also. The Friends Historical Library is one of the largest Quaker archives in the world and also holds Swarthmore College's institutional archives, so we have many documents and photos that help tell this story. You'll see a few on the tour today. But when your interest in Quaker history and Swarthmore College history is inevitably piqued, Please do explore our website, email us, or come visit us in person when the library is open. We love sharing our resources with you. We'll begin by greeting some of the familiar faces who I see in the Friends Historical Library every day. Say hello to Benjamin Halliwell. In 1861, he wrote the first pamphlet outlining the need for what would become Swarthmore College and was influential in early discussions about mission and curriculum. The year prior, 1860, Hallowell became the first president of what is now the University of Maryland, agreeing to the post on condition that the school used no slave labor. This fact takes on renewed significance with the current conversations happening right now about how many colleges and universities, such as Harvard, Princeton, and Georgetown, were built on the backs of enslaved people. So, although Swarthmore's founders were not perfect, and their anti-slavery work was not without controversy, our legacy on this score is not as shameful as many others. The first meeting in the campaign to create Swarthmore College was held in the home of this woman, Martha Ellicott Tyson, in Baltimore in 1860. She was involved in anti-slavery work and providing assistance to recently freed African Americans. She was on the founding committee of the Friends Association in aid of freedmen and was active in the Lombard Street Benevolent Society, two service organizations that served Baltimore's African American community. Martha might be best known as the first biographer of Benjamin Banneker, a freeborn African American who lived near Martha's childhood home. Banneker was friends with Martha's father and frequently borrowed books from the Tysons. Banneker was a remarkable figure. If you've been to the new Smithsonian Museum of African American History and Culture, you may have seen the life-size statue of him there. He was a brilliant mathematician, respected for his expertise despite being largely self-taught. He corresponded with Thomas Jefferson and published almanacs, including one that correctly predicted the 1789 solar eclipse. He was on the surveying team that laid out Washington, D.C., a team that was led by Martha's cousin. Banneker is an almost Quaker. He lived in the manner of friends, in the sense that he dressed plainly and attended Quaker meeting for worship. But he never officially became a member of the Society of Friends. It's unclear whether he was disinterested in becoming a Quaker, whether he was dissuaded from doing so because he was black, or some combination of the two. This is a theme you'll see again and again in Quaker history. While Quakers historically have been very helpful and sympathetic to African American causes compared with other sects, there have been few or no African American Quakers until relatively recently. Still today, the Society of Friends in the U.S. is disproportionately white. There are a number of explanations for why this could be, but there is lots of historical evidence of African Americans being actively discouraged or downright barred from becoming Quakers, probably because of fear of intermarriage, since Quakers could only marry other Quakers. From here, we proceed to a face many of you may recognize, Lucretia Mott a founder of the American Anti-Slavery Society, the leading figure behind the first women's rights convention at Seneca Falls, and a founder of Swarthmore College. Lucretia was extremely influential 
both for her leadership in early women's rights and in her anti-slavery work. At the time, there was concern over whether the issue of women's rights would distract from anti-slavery work and vice versa. While Lucretia encountered colleagues in both the women's and African-American rights movements who pushed to focus on one cause to the exclusion of the other, she insisted on pursuing them both simultaneously. She was a founder of the Female Anti-Slavery Society and the Pennsylvania Anti-Slavery Society. Both were racially integrated groups and the latter included both women and men. Imagine her chagrin when in 1840 she traveled from Pennsylvania to London as a delegate to the world's anti-slavery convention, only to be denied entry as the men had passed a resolution excluding women from the proceedings. Lucretia Mott wrote in an 1860 letter, if Washington and Jefferson only desired to exalt white men to a political level, not Negroes and women, why then they are no models for us. Speaking of Lucretia Mott, in the 1840s and 1850s, she was a founder of the Pennsylvania Yearly Meeting of Progressive Friends. An offshoot Quaker group, this meeting was particularly vocal in its support of abolition, women's rights, peace, temperance, and other reforms. The group's attendees included the famous abolitionist William Lloyd Garrison and the African-American abolitionist and women's rights advocate Sojourner Truth. I want to read to you an interesting quote from Sojourner Truth, who told a group of Michigan Quakers in 1871, I have always loved the Quakers and would have joined them, only they would not let me sing, so I joined the Methodist. In fact, when she attended the first meeting of the Progressive Friends in 1853, she graced the group with a song, I Pity the Slave Mother. She may have been sitting on the bench pictured, which the Friends Historical Library received from the meeting house where that group met nearby in Kennett Square.